Well, no year would be complete without the obligatory retrospective on the highs and lows, the triumphs and follies, the creativity and the buffoonery of the past 12 months. And as we emerge reluctantly from the hangovers and the weight gain of the festive season into the cold dawn of another January and the horrifying realisation that the party's over and we have to go back to work, I think it's time for my annual instalment of The Drinker Reflects. And yeah, I know I probably should have done this before December 31st, but what the hell? You weren't the only ones partying your way through to the end of the year, you know? Anyway, 2023 really was a year of discontent in the world of Hollywood, marked by months of strike action that blighted the summer movie season, and a series of high-profile failures and flops that got so bad they even spawned a new term, the Flop Buster. Indiana Jones 5, The Marvels, The Haunted Mansion, Fast 10, Ant-Man 3, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, Wish and Elemental all failed to take off at the box office. Some of these failures were entirely predictable of course. I mean, you didn't have to be a box office analyst to realise that Indy 5 was never going to make back its enormous budget, because who the hell really wanted to see an 80 year old Harrison Ford getting dragged around by an insufferable, STRONG FEMALE CHARACTER? And as for The Marvels, its monumental failure at the box office was a complete vindication for everyone who dared to suggest that building a movie around an invincible, unstoppable plank of wood wasn't a winning strategy. Other flops, however, were a bit more perplexing, like Mission Impossible, which had been on a high since the previous entry in the franchise, and Tom Cruise himself, who was going through a major career resurgence after Top Gun Maverick. But the movie itself never quite took off, partly because it was a definite downgrade in quality from Fallout, and partly because it was soon swallowed up by the box office juggernaut that would soon come to dominate and define the entire movie season, Barbenheimer. You know, some things in life are so bizarre and inexplicable that they pretty much defy even the most fundamental logic. In which case you have to throw up your hands and say, I don't fucking know man. And the pairing of a serious, thought-provoking, heavyweight historical epic with a pink, fluffy feminist comedy based around a plastic doll has got to be one of the strangest phenomena in cinema history. And yet, somehow, it worked. And if I'm honest, it worked out a lot better for Oppenheimer than it did for Barbie. Say what you want about that movie and it's clumsy and very on-the-nose social commentary, but one thing nobody can deny is that it was far and away the biggest film of the year, not just in terms of box office numbers, but the cultural impact that it had. It was proof positive that women will show up in massive numbers to movies that are actually marketed at them, instead of Hollywood's standard approach of awkwardly retooling traditionally male franchises in a lazy attempt to appeal to both genders, taking boy brands that girls can still enjoy and turning them into girl brands that nobody enjoys. And yes, I'm looking at you, Star Wars. As South Park so famously observed, Put a chicken in and make your name gay! Movies as big and influential as Barbie tend to provoke a real reaction from Hollywood, and it's going to be interesting to see what lessons they actually learn from its success. It could be that they finally realise men and women tend to have different interests, and trying to appeal to both usually ends up satisfying neither. On the other hand, they might just as easily conclude that girl power equals more money, and produce a slew of Barbie clones all pushing the same heavy-handed message in. Speaking of THE MESSAGE, there were a few failures so hilarious and pathetic that really, all you could do was point and laugh at them. Like Velma, a show predicated on hating everyone who happened to be straight, white or male, and turned out to be one of the most despised shows on TV, providing ample ammunition for the argument that women know as much about being funny as I know about Dry January. On the other hand, Queen Cleopatra turned out to be one of the most unintentionally hilarious projects in years, trying and failing to convince the world that Cleopatra was actually a black woman based on, uh, the filmmakers really wanting it to be true, I guess. Because when you really believe in something, why let verified historical reality get in your way? It was roundly shit on by just about everyone, and even got the filmmakers sued by the entire country of Egypt. Really, fails don't come much bigger than that. Except perhaps Rachel Zegler, who managed to single-handedly torpedo her $200 million reboot of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves with a series of obnoxious interviews that provoked such apocalyptic battles 
backlash that the film had to be delayed for over a year of extensive reshoots as the studio struggled to do damage control. Somehow, I don't think she has a glittering career ahead of her. <laughs> it's Hollywood, baby. I said before that 2023 was a year of surprises and not all of them were negative. In fact, we actually got some pretty cool stuff this year that gives me some measure of hope for the future. Sound of Freedom, for example, came out of nowhere after sitting on a shelf at Disney for half a decade, building on word of mouth and a groundswell of support to take in $250 million against a minuscule budget. Sisu proved that low budget action movies definitely still have a place at the global box office and became one of the most enjoyable films of the year for me. One Piece on the other hand showed that Netflix adaptations of popular mangas don't have to be disastrous failures provided you get the right people working on it. Dungeons and Dragons turned out way better than I expected, a good natured and charmingly fun adaptation of the source material that entertained but didn't quite find the audience that I think it deserved. And the final season of Picard somehow redeemed one of the most depressingly terrible shows in Star Trek history, allowing the next generation to go out on one final adventure and then bow out in style. But the king of this positivity hill has got to be Godzilla minus one, which snuck in at the tail end of the year and blew us all away without gripping, excitement and accessible it turned out to be. A movie with more heart, more interesting characters, and more compelling action in its two hour runtime than almost anything shot out by Hollywood in the entire year. Proof, if you need it, that if your own studios refuse to give audiences what they want, they'll find entertainment somewhere else. But if there's anything else that 2023 will be remembered for, it's the year that saw the implosion of the superhero genre, which finally collapsed under the weight of bloated budgets, plummeting quality and overextended universe versus out of the eight major superhero movies to come out in 2023, six of them were absolute flops, one was a marginal victory at best that was impossible to capitalise on, and only one could be considered a true box office success relative to its budget. And that was a fucking animated movie of all things. The company which has fallen the furthest is without a doubt Marvel, who'd been struggling to keep their momentum going for years, and a series of meandering movies with no overarching storyline, combined with bland TV shows that soon felt more like homework than entertainment, not to mention their increasing focus on THE MESSAGE, gradually alienated their once loyal fan base. The warning signs were there ever since Avengers Endgame, but 2023 was the year when it finally became impossible to ignore. Ant-Man 3 massively underperformed at the start of the year, while the Marvels became the biggest box office flop of the entire year. Only Guardians 3 achieved some level of success, and even that was muted compared to the previous film in the series. Even the mainstream media, usually so loyal to the Marvel brand, couldn't resist the smell of blood in the water any longer, and finally began reporting on the self-destruction of one of the biggest entertainment franchises in history. And if they acknowledge that there's a problem, then you know it's fucking bad. But if things were bad at Marvel, then they were even worse at DC, which was in the middle of reinventing itself for like the third time in a row. In a move I could best describe as the financial equivalent of ripping off the band-aid, they released the final four movies of their aborted DCU just a few months apart, all of which flopped in spectacular fashion. You could almost feel the change in public perception around the entire genre this year, the weariness, the apathy, the disinterest. What was once cool and epic was beginning to look dated, cheesy and tired. The unavoidable conclusion is that people are kind of over the superhero genre now. Yeah, declining quality and market saturation definitely hasn't helped, but really all it did was speed up the inevitable onset of superhero fatigue. If you remember the early Spider-Man and X-Men movies of the 2000s, we've been subjected to almost constant superhero films for more than 20 years now. A whole generation of film fans have been raised on this stuff, and maybe that's the real problem here. They've grown out of it. The same wide-eyed kids who cheered on Iron Man and Captain America 10 years ago are well into their 20s now and perhaps looking to move on to something a bit more challenging, mature and complex. Like Teletubbies. <laughs> That's not to say we'll never have more superhero movies. Of course we will. There's always going to be a loyal core of fans who eat this stuff up, but general audiences are far more fickle and easily bored, and I think the days of summer movie seasons dominated by Marvel and DC are well behind us now. And as far as I'm concerned, that is definitely a good thing. Add all of this stuff up, and it feels like the shift in the entertainment landscape that I predicted the previous year has finally come to fruition in 2023. The tired, oversaturated and played out franchises 
companies that have dominated the industry for the past decade are being rejected and abandoned now. The culture of remakes and reboots, of endlessly mining the same properties for more cash, seems to have finally hit creative bedrock. The focus on heavy-handed politics and social commentary is being openly mocked and countered for the first time. Things are changing fast and I think they're changing for the better. The real question now is, what's going to step in to fill this power vacuum? Well, films like John Wick 4, Sisu, Extraction 2 and Godzilla prove that there's definitely still an appetite for action movies. For the most part, they're way cheaper and easier to produce than superhero flicks and they have a proven track record at the box office, so I wouldn't be surprised if we started seeing more of them in the next couple of years. But honestly, I think the next big thing is likely to be video game adaptations. Aside from Barbie, the biggest movie of the year was easily Super Mario Brothers, which came out way back in April and to some extent I think got overshadowed by Barbenheimer. But it still made almost 1.4 billion dollars and although it wasn't exactly an amazing story, it proved the immense power of video game audiences. It was the same situation with The Last of Us, which delivered a mostly faithful adaptation of the game and showed that intelligence mature storylines are perfectly possible, even if the source material started out on a games console. Just like comic books before them, video games offer up that magic one-two punch for movie studios, decades worth of source material just waiting to be converted to the silver screen, and huge fan bases eager to see it happen. I mean, there's still plenty of ways for them to fuck it up, and if the Resident Evil, Halo or Uncharted adaptations are anything to go by, the path could still be a very difficult one. But a path there is, and it'll be interesting interesting to see how many studios walk down it. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.